New at 6, there are lingering concerns tonight over the disparity facing blacks and minorities when interacting with police. It's been a reoccurring issue here in the U.S. since it surfaced during the civil rights movement. The age-old conversation recently reignited when this video of an unarmed black man was attacked by a police canine in Circleville, and it gained national attention, leaving many saying more change is needed. People pouring into the streets, chanting for change. A massive movement that reached a boiling point all across the country three years ago, following the police killing of George Floyd and countless others. The community-led movement called for an end to police violence against black Americans and a systemic change in American policing, awakening much of the country to how much change is necessary to take real strides towards racial equality and justice. What, what we want as, as black people in this country and in this city especially is to feel safe. You know, the same for anybody else. A wish and hope civil rights attorney Sean Walton says sadly hasn't been achieved even after that loud outcry three years ago. I mean, legislatively, a lot of uh, bills were proposed and those those laws did not pass. Walton, who represents the family of Casey Goodson Jr., the Columbus man shot six times by a former Franklin County deputy, says real transformative change in policing remains elusive. Like we see what we've seen, and it is systemic and it is historic. The looming racial inequality highlighted in recent research. Black Americans are still more than twice as likely to be killed by police as white Americans. And black people were 26% of those killed by police in 2022, despite being only 13% of the population. Training can't do away with that. That's fear. That's bias. A prejudice, Walton says, often leads to different outcomes. This dash camera video shows a police encounter with a white man in Delaware County. Stopped for speeding, he refuses officers' orders with a gun on his seat. You just put your hand on a gun, sir. He eventually speeds off. Don't do it. Don't. An interaction starkly different than what played out back in July when a former Circleville officer released his canine on a surrendering unarmed black man. Video of that incident quickly spread across the country, alarming many, including Dr. Bernice King, the daughter of civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who led the civil rights movement with the message of equality. It's troubling to me anytime I see um, an individual who is in an arrest posture, surrendered, and they're attacked. That's very troubling. King says it's clear there is an ongoing struggle, which she believes will require a collective, coordinated effort to tackle, ensuring justice for all. Its work, Attorney General Dave Yo says, is already underway. We do have mandatory training. Uh, it's been funded the last two years. It's funded in the new state budget. The goal of the police reform efforts, which were laid out back in 2020, is to create meaningful change to law enforcement across the state. Uh, all 31,000 officers are going to receive 24 hours of training uh, over the next, uh, each year, over the next two years. Um, so promise made, promise delivered. There's such an emphasis placed on training, but no emphasis placed on accountability. And so um, it, it just it shows us that, you know, I guess arguably we're, we're further behind because after 2020 and after all the conversations and the progress to still be dealing with this shows that we're losing ground. We're not actually making any progress. Now we checked on that semi driver, Jadarius Rose. He had a felony charge against him dismissed at the request of the prosecutor. However, the case against the man seen in that trooper dash camera video is still pending in Delaware County.